So here we have our 16 strips of recycled styrofoam, which we're going to now tape to this. Unfortunately, in the home-scale renewable energy field in poor countries, you'll often be working alone because there's no profit to be made and it's hard to pay people and you're generally working on a shoestring budget to begin with. And you can expect that a lot of the people who learn from you in the field at home will be working alone most of the time. So you want a system that you can do pretty much alone. Uh, for insulating the tank, a roll of duct tape, and some stretch plastic generally will work and you can usually do it pretty much by yourself. We'll start by taking a strip of styrofoam and we'll tape it on. So that is our first layer and you will notice that there are air gaps in between each of the strips. We're going to cover them up with additional strips and then by stretch wrapping the whole thing together then no air will be able to escape, no heat will be able to escape and it should work just fine. We try to fill some of the larger gaps like this one here where the water pipe is coming out. And up here where the hot water goes in, we duct tape the piece and we can also fill that in with other small pieces. We'll wedge a couple of pieces in there and wedge a piece in here. So you can use the little pieces of scrap to wedge in like that. And now we're going to put a layer of stretch wrap around it and wrap it tight before we put our next layer to cover the big gaps. Now one could make the argument that maybe this would be sufficient, that because air is a good insulator, the fact that the cling wrap prevents any air from, um, from getting out means that these air gaps in between the styrofoam uh, shouldn't cause any reduction in the heat overnight from this. But we like to make sure, because we're recycling the styrofoam, putting another layer over all the gaps, even a thin styrofoam will uh, give us a better guarantee. Once again, the technique is fairly simple if you're alone. Place the piece of styrofoam over one of the gaps and tape it down so that you have the dimension. Do the same thing on the other side where you would have one of your gaps. Tape it down. Now get your cling wrap. And it clings, which is what's nice. See how it clings on here. And that enables you to go around the barrel. And you just go loosely, you just go loosely around once. Because it's basically a placeholder that you can use to get the rest of the styrofoam in. And if it comes apart, just make a little tie to hold this together temporarily. And then place the rest of your styrofoam on the gaps. This time even broken pieces will be fine because you're just covering up.
And once you've placed those pieces in, covering the gaps, just cling wrap it and then make it progressively tighter. Start on a piece of plastic because it'll cling to itself. You can see what the what it looks like from here. That wherever there's a gap, there's styrofoam covering the gap. So where you have a gap, you have a piece of styrofoam. Where you have a gap, you have a piece of styrofoam. Where you have a gap, you have a piece of styrofoam. Just like you're laying bricks. So once again, we have to dig out the hot water intake pipe somewhere in here. There it is. And now we will need to rewrap this section. nice to do here is to take a piece of styrofoam Now we just have to do the top. The top is tapered, so we have to do the top separately. Here's where a little bit of duct tape comes in handy. So once again we have a situation where we've covered the gaps with additional pieces of styrofoam which will then shrink wrap. What this method as opposed to the box lets you do is it lets you have access to the cover to do any repairs that you need to do inside the tank if you need to get in here and tighten this up. With the box method you had to take the box apart in order to get into the tank. The last thing we do is we make a semicircular lid for this. It doesn't have to be completely circular as long as it seals all of the areas up here where you would have uh, heat loss. We want to rough the edges out. And then take some duct tape and put it around the sides so that you protect the styrofoam from cracking. So it's really simple. So now you have yourself a lid for the barrel. That lid tends to cling a little bit, and of course when you're going to actually use the system regularly, you can cling wrap the entire thing down so that you have a uh, complete seal. And then if you need to, you can just cut the cling wrap, remove the lid, get in, and access the inside of your tank. So this is probably the simplest way to make really good insulation for your solar hot water or compost hot water tank regardless of its size, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed that. And so there we have the elevated, insulated 60 liter barrel. It's elevated now so that we get more thermosiphoning power. The cold water is under a head of pressure as it goes down into the composter, and then comes out heated into near the top of the insulated vessel. The temperature outside is 24 degrees. The temperature inside the composter at present is 
37.3. And today is Monday.